Welcome to the 24th Made in Prague Festival, presented by the Czech Centre London, running throughout the month of November on and offline, but mostly online. My name is Madeleine Mullet, I'm a film and cinema programmer, and I'm thrilled to present this Q&A for uh, Havelka's premiere of his film Owners in the festival. This film is screening from the 7th to the 10th of November. Please do check it out online. Uh, Havelka is a film director, writer, actor, theatre director, as well as drama teacher, amongst other things. Um, it is a pleasure to introduce you here, Yossi, to discuss your film with our audience. Hello. Hello, thank you very much for inviting and uh, applying our movie or assigning our movie to our festival. Um, Onus is a, a brilliant debut film. It, it manages to struggle both uh, comedy and drama and uh, uh, digging deep into human social behavior, all presented to us in the form of a one room claustrophobic setting. Um, this, gives, this setting gives you a huge advantage to paint uh, 12 very colorful characters. Um, and the setting itself means it, it feels like you have been able to give us these characters in, in all their sides. Um, they are attempting to agree on a number of agenda points in their residence association meeting. And through this, uh, we see um, their, uh, the tr true identity revealed. And um, uh, it, this, is, this sounds uh, like an incredibly um, real piece of work, but what, what, what this has given us is the, uh, the chance to, for the writing, your writing, uh, to really shine, especially as each character is brilliantly amplified to a perfect level of annoyance. They are um, in, incredible characters and they rise and rise and rise and it builds and builds. And I think this setting in particularly has, has, has given your writing a chance to, to shine, to really shine. And so right from the start, you set up an incredible, painful beginning, which takes the group half an hour to agree on some note taking. And, and, and you set the tone right away. And, and from the beginning, some of the characters are giving their traits away. You already see what they are like a little bit. Um, although it seems that you have given all 12 of your characters um, equal balance in the film. They all, they all present themselves equally as we go around the table, seeing what each person is about and what they want and how they would actually like to present themselves, but actually what their true intentions are once again. Um, so, so with this in mind, what was your inspiration for, for making this film? And I understand you do a lot of um, workshopping with theatre and I presume some of this workshopping or this, uh, this setup um, inspired or help you to create this film uh, or the script or, or how was this developed? Have I got it wrong or do you separate the two or, or where did it come from? Okay, well basically you are right that it's kind of annoying film because it's full of annoying characters and uh, it's based on my, on my own experiences when I was annoyed by the people uh, <laughs> around me uh, of course, it's all connected to my uh, like to my own apartment, to my flat uh, when I was uh, living in Holeshovice in Prague, and I became the owner of the flat because uh, my grandfather was living there and he uh, signed it to me, and uh, that was the first step for this movie or for the theater as well that uh, I became a, a, a member of this uh, association of the owners, and I had to visit and attend these, uh, these meetings where actually at the very beginning you see it as a perfect democratic uh, platform for actually doing something with the building. We are owners of the flats and we should do something with the, with, uh, the space and with the, with the whole building, with the, with the space that we have in common. Well, and suddenly you are coming with some uh, offers ideas, options, and you see that it's almost impossible to achieve any kind of change because of the, um, <laughs> what 
what is it? It's like, uh, un, uh, because the people are unwilling to actually agree on anything, which is okay, and I would be okay with that. I can understand it that everyone has different uh, opinion, but then the other uh, level of uh, your knowledge comes, uh, it says that uh, the rational arguments are totally not part of this. It's all about like presentation, self-presentation, and actually about putting some social mask and achieving some kind of uh, you know, fight for your own identity, for your own uh, meaning, for meaning of yourself, uh, that you can't achieve in normal life. And here it's a, it's a perfect platform for actually doing it, for, for uh, showing your power. And then in this moment it started that I was saying to myself, this is something very interesting because uh, it's so, it really the hour and a half was always kind of uh, frustrating and almost um, like I really wasn't looking forward to be part of that, but I wanted to visit it and to, uh, to achieve the change. So yeah, this is the very, very um, core of the inspiration. Well, it, it manages brilliantly to be uh painful and real and funny you know uh, so it, painful in a complimentary way because it, it really gets to the core of uh, human behavior um precisely as you say how people would like to present themselves uh in a decision making process where they want to be right but at the same time the situation spirals out of control and is this this spiraling um, that I see is the film's arc? Essentially, all the characters' arc. They they all seem to break at a certain point, and 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 when we see that break with each character, the film goes into its second half. Um, how did you how did you build each character? Were they made individually, or did you have to put them together all as a group, or did you did you do this? Again, did you use some kind of uh, theatrical background, maybe s systems like workshopping or other other experiences from your oeuvre to, to, to create these characters? Well, yeah, definitely the very important phase of the whole process uh, of writing the script was uh, five days when we decided to invite, um, like, uh, my theatre partners from Vosto 5, which is my own company, uh, and friends, and we were improvi improvising, improvising in uh, in uh, actually one small room, uh, roughly the same size of the room when it was shut uh, after. And uh, this was very important because I'm like this is kind of my my attitude to any kind of artistic work. What I'm doing that uh, I need this uh, quite long phase of uh, searching and. Uh, very author uh, approach of each member of the team of the creative team to the to the thing or to the theme that we are working on together and it was important definitely but then uh, for the film version actually more important i think was the the final theater piece that was already on and was uh, performed already and i knew that we need totally different approach for the film version and the theater uh, performance is based on the fact that people are sitting in the same room with the actors around the table mm -hmm. and they are kind of immersed in the in the situation and they are actually in the same role when I was at the beginning when I didn't have any um, function in the leadership of the residents or association of owners and when you are really newcomer you are sitting in, uh, at the wall in the third row maybe fourth maybe fifth because you are really shy to say anything <laughs> what should happen with the building and you are just watching and you are saying to yourself hey i don't want to be part of this hell <laughs> and i want to escape but you can't because you bought the apartment and you gave all the sparings and all the money from your parents and her parents and everyone together so you are kind of uh, caught uh, in this uh, like in this cage so uh, we knew that uh, for the film version it would be totally different approach much more based on the um, working with each actor and each character that it must be much more like um, comedy of characters as they say you know in theater and um, in that moment this second very important question uh, came to our minds 
which was actually what is the good proportion between the model model situation between like the that we are creating some kind of stylized microcosm uh, like pattern or how is it yeah. uh, one one cell of whole organism mm -hmm. and how much do we want to actually uh, to like cause to the audience the feeling that it's actually talking about them that they are part of something what is almost documentary social movie and then we decided actually what what really is uh, maybe what would what would uh, take the people the audience and and draw through the whole movie would be if we start as a kind of documentary and slowly we would peel it off and get through the levels to very almost stylized uh, characters and uh, but of course to some to some extent not like to very crazy comedy but to the extent where you would say hey this couldn't happen on one meeting and it couldn't because you cannot sign like uh, white papers and uh, blank papers but we knew that if we do it very slowly step by step gradually then you could go with that without saying yourself hey this is not reality it's brilliant well done. That actually has uh, I have so many questions from this actually because one is uh, I want to touch on one note that you said uh, uh, just now, which is um, that you only only a very little bit of stylized um, style was applied to the filmmaking. It did feel feel like to me it could be documentary. Certainly, the setting, uh, the the film, the natural filming of it. Um, apart from there are a few uh, slowed down scenes and i think these are the only scenes with music if i'm correct i'm not sure but, uh, so these are the only stylized moments which um to me sort of bracket the film and to say okay this is the film and then now you're going into the documentary bit to see the people um apart from that it really feels like it could be like a natural film documentary it, you know it's very close to the bone what what did you have in mind with these um slow motion uh, scenes because they're they're beautiful and they create this dreamlike setting and then I, I suppose to me they told me okay now you're going to go watch a film you know and this is the film and now this is the end but um so don't be scared whilst you're watching it this is the film this is the story I've created um but can you tell us what you meant with this well actually you are saying what was in my mind you are reading it perfectly it's uh when we did the first version without actually this first and last scene which is slowed down uh, although we we shot it in in um, slow motion but we didn't put it uh, to, to the first version after editing the first version of the movie and uh, i i knew that there must be something as you said the brackets of of aestheticization uh, that are actually uh, maybe even a relief in in such a way for like being sure that this is just a movie and at the same time actually uh, emphasizing by that that it's not just a movie that it's really happening around us and then there is the second reason uh, because there is uh, the the slow motion part is at the beginning at the end and in the second third of the movie there is the scene of uh, fake giving birth uh, of uh, of the character of the young character <laughs> oh, yes. and it's actually much inspired by the by the sh uh, well by the let's say uh, by one of the interviews with uh, Robert Wilson in in his, in 70s also when he was doing when he started to be really global famous for his very slow motion seven hour long plays mm -hmm. uh, on the stage and he said that uh, he saw uh, mother right after uh, like a uh, footage of mother uh, right after giving birth like few seconds when the baby they take the baby and they put it on the on her chest and it's filmed in very very slow motion and he said that to watch these uh, very different emotions in her um, face was for him something striking and i saw the footage and it's really something incredible because the now, suddenly the advantage of the movie that you can slow down the motion is actually taking out all your uh, uh, weapons for uh, hiding your real <laughs> you know manners or your real uh, attitude to this situation at the certain time so this is uh, yeah this is for me very important that there is some 
humanic um, ace of uh, how we behave that's undisputably common for everyone and when we see something we have to go to this like very basic level and we can't hide the the we can't put any kind of social mask so yeah this was also interesting for me yes absolutely they they this is something uh, very particular to a film where you can slow down and amplify the expressions and i suppose yes you the characters and the actors cannot hide once you slow down the frames to see every expression and all of the expression, I suppose, all of it. So that, that definitely works in the film. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I would like to talk a, a bit a bit more about the characters because in, in, in a specific reference to the fact that whilst I was watching the film, Second I felt third. very engaged with how Czech they felt, how very uh, much a representation of Czech society, lots of different types of generations of Czechs are all portrayed in, in these 12 characters. It seemed very um, uh, specific to Czech culture, but once I uh, stepped out of the film and had a chance to thought, think about it and contemplate it, these characters really were universal and this setting uh, could be anywhere. They could be in offices, they could be in workplaces, they could be in um, in homes, in any dimension, you have this set of characters. You can have, um, let's take the, the workplace specifically. Um, uh, you have people who have small town gossiping local issues, or you have bureaucratic pencil pushing people. Um, they are everywhere. Um, there are, however, a couple of things that I found uh, very specific to Czech society. And please c correct me if I'm wrong or elaborate if, if you if you can. Um, I noticed the, 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 the divide between the old regime and uh, the, the post-communist generation. So there was, um, they have some wonderful entertaining clashes in the film, um, things that are very current, but that seem to come from this generational clash of, of, of two different generations. And I, I assume the post-communist generation are now old enough to be homeowners. So it's, a, again, a great setting for this. Um, so dealing with issues that are bureaucratic, as in a, a residence association meeting, challenges will come up. So these felt very Czech with the bureaucratic uh, 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 ex uh, holder of the meeting just sabotaging everything um always referring to the old way and the old regime and how things used to be different um i kind of felt like screaming out at the screen to correct him or to just mention something each time um this but this young generation comes across as, as, as also very much half of the film half of the old uh, the characters um this clash uh, did you did you specifically um, think about how this represents maybe politics, like contemporary politics, about how maybe uh, a lot of the world and uh, are returning to there's almost like a reversal to uh, conservative or right wing ways of thinking across the world, specifically today before the American election uh, and we don't know how it's going to turn out so there are a lot of issues that are local and Czech in your film but that can be certainly attributed to global uh, politics to a global scale was this something you intended to highlight or is just something I'm reading into it because of the world that we are we are in now well probably it was not the main intention why to do it there was no political background at the beginning definitely but of course as you said like today elections in US and if I would watch the movie today definitely I would emphasize this uh, you know the perception would be always different according to what's happening in the head of the of the spectator which is great about film and, and theater but uh, to be honest I think I didn't really think about this although I will I was uh, because as you said, like people really see their neighbors in the movie because the characters look uh, almost um, almost exaggerated to be like this specific figure with this specific uh, 
behavior uh, habits and, and and political opinions but it's not actually like that because this is really my experience and these are like real neighbors but all the letters and emails i was receiving after the premier are saying hey you must have been living in our uh, building so it's actually it's almost incredible how easy it is to you know create this kind of characters because they are really um, in a sense universal but at the same time they are not they are they are deeply rooted to my my own experience so i think there is uh, if it's working like uh, like you were describing then i, I am happy because uh, there are like more levels of pr uh, perceiving the movie and one of the thickness would be definitely this that there is some kind of everywhere in the world nowadays are part of um, conservative people who are afraid and want to stick and hold their old world which doesn't exist anymore and actually never existed in their imagination only in their imagination it never existed as they um, as they um, imagine yeah yeah Imag imagine is it probably imagine yeah it and um, uh, uh, at the same time there is this like left being getting much stronger but the left parties are uh, totally corrupted, uh, decreasing in the number of voters and in a sense everywhere in the at least western world is happening something similar with the uh, populism and, and so on and uh, of course like Mr. Johnson, Mr. Trump uh, and uh, our Mr. Babish and so on. But I think there are like then then there are some uniqueness of the uh, of the development of Western and Eastern world and uh, the Czech position is very specific in many ways. Even nowadays you can see it because like the the conjunction, the the mixture of the heritage done by the socialism and especially norm normalization. They this like. 1970, 1980, these were like the very important years for adapting on this, um, you know, system of inner corruption. Everyone was kind of collaborating, but not in a mm, big sense, uh, only like, like having better meat or having better, you know, school and better doctor. And this suddenly turned into this uh, very wild capitalism in 90s. And this cocktail is very specific, I think, you know, compare even to Slovak Republic and of course to Germany, so to our closest neighbors on East and West. And we are somewhere in the middle, having nowadays all the comfort and all the, like we are really like consumers, uh, like in Western world, but at the same time we are still having these old habits and we are kind of nostalgic very much about these uh, like old opportunities that we uh, had. And it's not only like young and old, and it's also not only like vo voters of this party and this party. And the, the border leads uh, in very strange uh, directions sometimes for me, even in uh, like, um, I'm talking about family, about the school where I teach, about like my very close uh, environments. And I'm sometimes very, very surprised uh, how big uh, like gap is between us. So yeah, it, it's not there primarily, but uh, I am glad that uh, you can read it in many different ways. And actually, even when I was uh, visiting uh, some cinemas, uh, some uh, movie theaters, when it was on uh, the owners, I was surprised how differently I'm perceiving it according to the different reactions of the people watching the movie at the time. Well, with, with, uh, with this in mind, actually, uh, would you like to elaborate on, on, on the ending, actually? Um, so, um, I like the ending. I, I'm, I'm wondering if you, yes, okay, with all of these, with all of these topics that you just covered in your brilliant <laughs> answer, thank you. Did they get swindled by the Chermak brothers or did the house burn down or was that opposite? Or do they all eventually agree or actually, um, they all they all actually easily agree just once some a solution is presented to them in a way which they all wanted to do they all wanted to agree and, and, and forget about the whole meeting and move on but they just like to present themselves in an aggressive manner to present a certain personality as we've been discussing um the whole time but 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 the, the ending it's it, it completely it comes out of nowhere and and they do they 
do they all agree once or is it too late or do they continue in this circle of petty bureaucracy or, or is this something you don't want to tell us or uh, uh, actually, uh, I have many explanations uh, I can tell you some of them <laughs> uh, but um, uh, you are quite uh, yeah, exceptional because not many people or, or I mean the the most common reaction is, well, I, I love the movie, but not the ending. So <laughs> do you like the ending? Well, uh, for me, the question is if they are actually sons of Mr. Chermak or not. This is still open for me, but I'm tending more to know how. But uh, I can tell you the very, when we were talking about political perceiving, a political op optic of perceiving it, then I can tell you the political explanations, which would be that, uh, like, Mr. Babish is now the leader of uh, our republic, and most of the people are very happy with his leadership and, and would vote for him again and again because he actually took all the responsibility for our own actions mm -hmm. of them. So he is one of the messiahs that uh, took out the burdens, even of the collaboration with the old regime of the... Uh, you know, not being um, that it would to be, I don't know, jealous or to make big money, mm -hmm. like all these burdens that were put on our shoulders, he is taking out and for that we would vote for them, not me, but generally the Czechs would. And uh, he is very sympath sympathetic. He is, uh, like, he is like Brother Chermax. Uh, he looks uh, that he can deal with everything, with every strange situation that he will take care and this taking care is like the biggest uh, danger of the world of uh, consumers as we are now you know that uh, if there is this offer i will i will take care i will take the responsibility and you don't have to have it then it's uh, it's a devil's offer and um, you cannot do anything against that only you can like vote for someone else in next election uh, uh, and um, Mr. Grzebejk, uh, film director Grzebejk, uh, said that the burning house is actually Hungary. Uh, and we are not in the same state as Hungary. That's one of the political explanations. But for me, it was, it was different. Of course, it was more connected to the character of uh, Sokol, of this, uh, the only uh, old guy representing kind of the old world, but how I imagine it, not how Mr. Kubat imagine it, <laughs> imagines it. And uh, he is uh, he's actually opening the movie. Not many people uh, noticed that he is slowly walking, even in the daylight, because he's walking slowly. So he needs to go one hour before the, the meeting starts. He has to go out and go slowly there. And then he's also ending the whole meeting because he's closing it and going back home and watches uh, across the street other building. And we should be thinking that the whole time the the pictures we were seeing from the house where it was the house that we are uh, negotiating about now in this meeting but it was actually not it was one where they are even worse and when brother Chermax already did everything they could you know they probably put an insurance in the building and let it burn down or whatever i don't know so yeah this is one of the explanation but the, there is like tons of others <laughs> well uh in this sense, you offer a um, you offer an answer, but you also, with this explanation, you've also left out that there are some people who have not given their signature. There are some people who have left the meeting, and understandably, uh, no motion can be secured until all the residents have agreed. So there is a, there is some hope that you offer if we read into it that way. There is hope, but uh, at the same time, you can read it as a total, like, as, as a final disaster and failure because uh, all the people that were willing to achieve any kind of agreement were step by step leaving actually the, the room, the place where it was happening. And the people who left are the people who are willing to give the signature, except for Mrs. Um, uh, Marishkova, uh, I think, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, no, Rubičkova. and um, she doesn't give the signature uh, because of the uh, actually trade you know she's she's offering something because she's in the control 
uh, associate uh, control organ and uh, this is also yeah, like yeah. another big theme i think of this uh, post communist uh, middle europe countries that uh, the politics is turning into business and it's all question of like offer of uh, how much would you offer for this information or for this information but now i'm yeah, a little bit um, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of my vocabulary well actually we have uh, slowly have to wrap up but i have one last question actually for you and that would be um do you have any favorite anecdotes uh, from filming or fav funny stories from filming or or maybe from as you mentioned screenings um audience reactions has ha have you had any interesting questions or or any uh, what's your favorite thing to close with from your filming experience with this either from making the film or from screening it afterwards uh, well uh, oh, sorry <laughs> i don't know it was uh, one big adventure because um I really, to the very last moment, didn't expect that the sh that we will really start shooting of the movie, you know, because uh, uh, I was uh, more times in front of this occasion, or I was asked many times to rewrite the the theater script into movie, but it never happened because everyone needed always some changes in and uh, put some different demands, uh, and so. For me, it's just one year of very weird adventure that I'm lucky that I could go through. But one particular moment, I don't know. I'm, I'm always very happy when I was when I'm in the in the cinema and I hear, uh, and I'm hearing the reactions that are, are coming from different people in different moments. You know that they are really like you can almost tactile, almost like feel, but like in your body very different um, reactions in in that in that one room even clapping of hands to one character and then after a while to another character so this is probably the most uh, uh, satisfying moments <laughs> well um uh, I, I'd like to thank you, Yuri Havalka, for presenting us your film here and for discussing it uh, at such great lengths with us. Um, it was an absolute pleasure and um, I have uh, really enjoyed this and I hope our audiences do too. Um, uh, thank you and I really hope you make another film soon and we shall see it uh, here or ideally in cinemas. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having this opportunity. <laughs> thank you.